All right, so this video is going to be about uh, defocus inside of Nuke and uh, the tools inside of Nuke that we can use to make an image look like it's out of focus. And if we look at our, I, got, I just took this shot last night uh, and I tried to make it as you know sharp and as in focus as I could. And then I took a couple other shots where I tried to make it out of focus. And you can see right here, uh, when a, a camera goes out of focus, interesting things happen in the highlights. So you can sort of see that the image, the, the highlights here kind of, they get this effect, which is called bokeh, uh, which will, uh, you know, takes on, makes the highlights sort of take on like a shape uh, that's influenced by the lens that you use. Notice that these don't really get dimmer. Uh, they're actually pretty bright and they stay, you know, like they don't, they don't, these highlights don't get dimmer as they bloom outward. It actually gets a little bit overexposed on it. And uh, if I really take it to an extreme, then you can see over here how, how bright and how big the defocusing can, can get. So if I wanted to make this out of focus, uh, Nuke has a couple tools in it. Uh, that work pretty well. So the first one is going to be uh, just the defocus tool. Now this is an older tool and I wouldn't really recommend it anymore but you can sort of see here what it does. Uh, when I turn this up you can see that we get this kind of uh, the circle goes around the highlights and it kind of looks like uh, you know the same similar type of effect sort of blooms outward. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Nuke also has uh, the Convolve. And Convolve will blur an image based on another image. So if I were to make, say, a uh, constant, and I'm going to make this constant, say, 255, so kind of small. And then I'll attach a flare node to that. And there's lots of cool stuff we can do with the flare node. But what I'm going to do is just basically uh, fill in that inner color. And I want to give it more of a shape. So I'll turn on edge flattening to 1 and set that sharpness to 99. So I get something that looks more like a, like a lens and I could even maybe bow it outward a bit and then when I connect it there it says it's missing an alpha because the convolve node is looking for an alpha but if I go in here just pick either red green or blue uh, then you can see what happens to my image and it does look kind of soft uh, 255 the size I made my constant is a bit big so I'm just gonna drop down a reformat and I'm going to set the to scale and then I'm just going to scale that down a bit and you can sort of see that now we're getting the, these little lens highlights uh, sorry these lens artifacts in the highlights of my image and it does look a bit dim uh, this is just a JPEG so it you know anything that's bright sort of maxes out at one but what I could do is drop down a a keyer node, maybe key out the highlights like that, and then I'll attach a, a grade node, make sure I use the mask, the alpha there to mask out this color correction, go to my highlights and crank them up, and now when I look at it I get something that looks like that, and that helps out, you can sort of see the difference just makes those highlights bloom outward a bit more and, and just have more pop and uh, the defocus uh, it helps that out in the same way that will uh, sort of see there the difference that makes so these nodes are all great but there's a new node in Nuke 7 that uh, I think works really nicely and I would sort of recommend that over over these nodes over here so I'm just gonna copy this and put these guys to the side and I'm just gonna put it over here and then I'm gonna bring in the Z defocus and the first thing you get is an error uh, 
and that's because it's looking for the depth channel. So if you switch it and have it look at, say, an alpha channel, and I'm just going to give this guy an automatic white alpha, and now it'll work. And this will just apply it globally to the whole image. So uh, I'm going to go to size, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And you can see that it's going to bloom out those highlights, very similar to the defocus node. Uh, what's kind of cool is if we open this up a bit more, uh, we have spots down here for gamma correction, which is really going to make those highlights pop. So we don't really have to use the grade node to uh, brighten those areas up. They're going to get bright on their own. And there's also a bloom, and that is also going to just makes it a bit brighter. So we get this really, I think, very pretty looking uh, shot that, that's going to kind of get get us that defocused effect. But there's also a few other tricks in this node where if you go to the filter shape right now, it's set to a disk. So if I look at my output and set it to the filter shape setup, then it's going to show me that this is what is causing the uh, the defocusing. This is the shape that the those highlights are going to take. But if I can change that and go to bladed, and then we get this sort of little mini editor inside here, which to me seems a lot like the uh, the flare node. Uh, you can sort of go in here, you can dial in the shape that you want, you know, maybe the rotation. You can set how many blades there's going to be. And, uh, and now if I look over here and I go back to my result, then those highlights are going to have that same shape. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also dial in and use uh, an input image. So if I go here, I'm just going to grab that same uh, flare that I had over here, and then I'm going to dial in and say, we'll use the image. And it says it's missing the alpha because it's, it's looking at the alpha, but I'm just going to have it grab either the, either the red, green, or blue channel. And, uh, and now it's using that image uh, to create the, the highlight. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. So it's sort of like it has the best of both. It, it allows you to defocus like the old one, and it also allows us to uh, put in input image like the Convolve node does. So all that stuff is really kind of interesting, but what is also kind of very cool about the defocus node is that there's a way to sort of have it gradually go in and out of focus. Um, what I would have to do before is I would maybe have to make maybe like five defocus nodes and then put masks around the area and, and sort of ramp them so that maybe it would there would be a little bit of defocus over here. Then as it would get further back, there'd be more and more. So I'd have to like layer a bunch of these defocuses together. But uh, that was never any fun to uh, to do, and it was it would be t take a quite a render hit uh, when I would do those. The defocus nodes can take a bit of time. Uh, also notice that Convolve and the Z defocus. Uh, they'll run off your GPU, or th they'll do the processing off the GPU if you have a GPU that supports it. I'm running it on a MacBook Pro that, that doesn't have a compatible video card, so it's just using the CPU. But if you're on like a NVIDIA, more higher end graphics card than, than what I have, then it'll be about four. When I, my, my computer at work has a, a compatible graphics card, and it goes about four times uh, faster. So uh, it's a significant speed up. Um, but now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to turn off the auto alpha and then I'm going to drop down a ramp. And then I'm going to make this ramp. Let me just look at this over here and just have it ramp up like that. And I'm going to have the ramp go just in the alpha and uh, I'll change the fall off on it. So now I'm going to go in here, and if I look at the alpha, we have that. And then I can dial in the focus point. So now, if I look at this, check out what's happening here. Uh, you can see down around here, it, it's very sharp, and it gradually is going to move into the area that's out of focus. And uh, I think that's super cool. Or uh, if I put the maybe focal point over here, you can see it's going to ramp off. Yeah, maybe I could change the ramp. I just want to see this a little bit more clearly. 
So I'm going to do something like that. And now it's just processing. So this does take, when you include depth, you can see here that my render times uh, have went up pretty significantly, uh, which, you know, makes it more useful for the uh, GPU rendering. And let's just wait for this to go through. So there you can sort of see that I'm having it sort of gradually, I'm oh, sorry, let me move this up a bit more. And so I'm having it ramp from uh, right to left. And here's a good example of it. So now when I look at it over here, you can see that it's in focus, in focus, and then it sort of gradually ramps to being out of focus. So you can sort of see that right over here. And, uh, and so, I mean, this is really cool because now uh, you get the sort of gradual effect and you only take ne need the one node to, uh, to do it. And where this really shines is obviously in CG renders. So I'm gonna go back to this example, uh, this render that I've done, and I'm going to bring in the Z defocus. Now what you can do over here, so you have this little focal point uh, controller over here. And what I can do is over here in my output, you can go to the focal plane setup. And what this will give you is a view of what's going to be in focus and what's going to be out of focus on your shot. And uh, the green area is the area that's going to be totally 100% in focus. And then you're going to have some blurring that, or uh, some defocusing that happens in front of the lens and some that goes behind the lens. And so that's what these different colors here represent. You can play around with the depth of field. So if I make that bigger or smaller, you know, you can sort of affect what's going to be in focus and what's going to be out of focus. And it's just using the different slices of depth to, uh, to calculate that. Okay. So if your image doesn't have a, a depth image, then it, it won't be able to use this. But if, if it's pretty trivial to render out a depth pass. And you can sort of see, you can sort of slide in the areas that you want. There's also another view that is for, it says layer setup. And I believe uh, the way that this works is it will show you uh, sort of like the gradients of how it goes from in focus to out of focus. Now when I rendered this guy, uh, I did it pretty badly. And if I just go to my depth, you can see that the values that I have here in the depth channel, uh, there's not that much uh, of a gradient there. So let me just go and I'm going to go to a, a grade node and I'm just going to grade my depth channel. And I'm just going to take that black point and raise it up a bit. And I'm going to take the white point and just grade it down a bit. And then I'm just going to take a gamma just so I can kind of see the gradient a little bit more clearly. And so I'm getting something like that. And so now, if I go back here, and I'm just going to dial in. Now you can see, so here's my focal plane setup. That stays the same, pretty much. Okay, so I'm just dialing in what's going to be in focus and out of focus, and I could increase my depth of field. So I have areas that I know are going to be in focus. But then if I go to my layer setup, then here I can sort of see how it's going to gradually go from in focus to out of focus. Okay, so if I look at over here, oops, if I go back to my result, then you can sort of see, well, you can, I think you should be able to clearly see, and I'll just turn up the maximum size a bit more. You can see that the front of my face is out of focus and as it gets back towards the ears it goes out of focus. But if I were to change this, grab it, and put it say at the tip of the nose, then now that is going to be in focus and it's going to fall off uh, and be out of focus. Okay, so you can sort of move this guy around and uh, I'm just going to pump it up the values a bit. If you push it too far, 
then you know it'll kind of break and you'll get some artifacts but I just with playing around with it uh, it's pretty forgiving uh, you can sort of see here we were getting some artifacts but if I put that over a background a lot of these artifacts just kind of blend in over black they stand out but if it was a brighter background then you wouldn't even hardly notice them at all like if I just drop down maybe uh, a checkerboard and just make sure it's the right size and then just comp these over top you see a lot of those artifacts that you saw around the edges kind of just disappear okay so uh, I'm going to uh, I'll, I'll put these uh, frames uh, as a link on my blog so if you want to grab I'll put up the uh, the shot of the city and maybe uh, some of these out of focus ones for reference and I'll put up a, a frame of uh, this face and it'll have the depth channel into it so if you want to practice or try it out yourself you can uh, thanks for watching mm -hmm.